Fantastic. Check engine light is back on. And we got error code P0302 for the cylinder 2 misfire. Let's see if we can get this fixed. Uh, this right here is the uh, the order of the cylinders. So, All right, so here's the number 2 cylinder. Just be careful if it's hot so that you don't burn yourself because you're right next to all this stuff. So I've been dealing with a number 2 cylinder misfire for about a year now. Tried replacing the spark plug, the spark plug wire multiple times and it still misfires. So um, I've noticed a few times when it does it, it blows out some white smoke. So somebody mentioned maybe the, uh, <clears throat> maybe there is something that, maybe the head gasket is leaking water into the cylinder. So figured I'd uh, give it a shot, give this a shot to see if maybe it really is water getting into the cylinder. So when I put this into my car, it had about, uh, the antifreeze was up to the minimum mark on the, the overflow tank or the coolant reservoir, whatever you want to call it. And I just poured it all in there and it actually took it up to the full mark on the coolant reservoir. And, um, and this thing says that you can pour it straight into the coolant reservoir. Or overflow tank, I should say. Anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens. So, this is the coolant reservoir, or the overflow tank, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, this is what I was telling you about, where it was down to the minimum, uh, before I poured the head gasket repair stuff in. And then when I poured it all in, it took it up to the max. So, when you do that, you want to make sure your coolant level in here at least down to the minimum if you're going to pour it into the overflow tank and after you pour it in you don't want to just let it sit in there because uh, you don't want it to gum up anything uh, in, in inside here you want to pour it in and then go drive your car around allow that uh, antifreeze to cycle and to draw that stuff down into the cooling system so that it kind of cycles through and then starts to uh, do its work as far as the repairing the head gasket. And one other thing about that stuff I used is um, you could just pour it in and leave it in the cooling system. You don't have to flush your cooling system after using it. Um, whereas some of those other head gasket seal uh, formulas, you got to flush the cooling system and and use it a certain way, certain temperatures, certain whatever. But anyway, this one you just pour it in and, and let it do its work. It has been three months since I ran that head gasket uh, stuff through my cooling system to seal the any leaks and the check engine light has not come back on which is the longest it has ever gone without being on uh, after getting this number two cylinder misfire issue. So the head gasket seal stuff in the cooling system definitely seems to have done the job. And I got a code reader here. I'm gonna hook up just to show you that it does not have any codes. Um, even though the check engine light isn't on, I just wanna you know, show you that it definitely does not have a engine code. So let's hook that up. Got this code reader. It's the uh, C Reader 3001. It's an OBD2 scanner, and uh, it's made by Launch. They sent it to me for free to try out. It's pretty cheap on Amazon. It's $27.99. I'll leave a link in the description for the scanner, and also if they give me a discount code, I'll put that in the in the description also. So here's everything it claims it can do. I'm going to use it on my 2003 Ford Focus. And here's the instructions that come with it. Uh, it says turn the vehicle on. Vehicle battery must be between 9 and 18 volts. Throttle should be in the closed position. Uh, locate the vehicle's DLC socket. The DLC is typically standard 16 pin, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, connect the diagnostic cable to the vehicle DLC socket. Kind of surprised they have you turn the vehicle on first, but whatever. Whenever I take it to AutoZone, whatever card reader they use, they always they always turn the uh, ignition on after they plug it in. But let's give it a shot. It does come with a nice cap on the end of the reader uh, diagnostic cable. So let's plug it in after we turn on the ignition. So let's turn on the ignition and plug it in. Okay, gonna turn my ignition on. And then uh, down here you got your OBD2, well your OBD uh, drop down door there. And got my plug, goes like that. Looks like it's powered itself on. Cool. Let's try this uh, de diagnose, I guess. Reading's okay. Incidence is zero. Readiness not applicable. Um, uh, got read codes, erase codes. Okay, so I want to read codes and see if it shows a history. <clears throat> Has no fault codes, which is correct. It does not have any. I was hoping it would show a history. Let's see what, uh, the O2 sensor. Onboard monitoring, EVAP system, vehicle information, interesting. Let's see what the VIN is. Yeah, I got the VIN correct. So let's go back. Okay, so I want to re- Let's do the data stream. I'm just curious what that's got to do. I guess fuel system one, maybe that means, uh, see all means clean or clear. But yeah, we're getting data. RPM. Yeah, it looks like everything's reading fine. I'll just do read codes again. Now let's do the O2 sensor test, just for fun. Let's do bank one, sensor one. Oh, okay. Let's do bank one, sensor two. Whoops. Okay, I guess we can do that. Let's see if it'll do the onboard monitoring. Test. I don't know what that is. Whatever it was, it passed. Let's see, let's see if there's a...
Oh no! Oh no! I don't even know if that's correct. Yeah, I want to exit. So I don't actually have a code to show you, but uh, so far it looks like it's working. Uh, when an actual code pops back up, or if I have a friend that has a code that pops up, I'll use it and uh, show you that. I don't feel like inducing a code on this because I feel like I'm going to uh, end up destroying something. This uh, this car is it's getting old. Lots of miles. Anyway.